Jamie and Gemma. Hi. From Play to Learn Preschool. Happy Wednesday. So, one week from today, we are going to Los Angeles, California. Yay! We're so excited. So, you know, I just got back from New York this past weekend, but Gemma didn't get to go. Um, but it's okay because we're actually headed to the NACI Annual Conference in Los Angeles a week from today on Wednesday. I have never been to California. I have, and I really enjoyed California. We need suggestions because we're going to have a little bit of free time on Wednesday and then a little bit. But we will be working very hard oh. for all the parents who are watching this. Well, I mean, we're like, we get in in the morning and then the sessions don't start until the evening. So we get a, we we have have a couple of hours in the afternoon. It's not like. And we will have no kids with us. If our husbands ask, we're working really, really hard. But we also have a couple of hours in the afternoon and we need some suggestions about what to do hmm. in Los Angeles. So if you live in California, help us out, right? Yeah, I'm so excited. We can't wait. <laughs> yeah, we have fun when we go away together. Yes. It's, it's a really, really cool opportunity too. Wednesday evening is the opening, cer um, the opening of the ceremony. <laughs> it's not like the <laughs> Olympics. <laughs> it's like opening. The um, Presentation. No? I guess. Remarks or whatever. And it's my one of my favorite like my heroes of early childhood <laughs> education maria from sesame street is going to be speaking at the opening session. last okay so last time we went to this the big nacy conference in dallas we're walking around she's like oh look it's so and so oh look it's so and so i'm like did you want to bring your autograph book next time jamie i totally found girl out about all the early childhood education yes she did <laughs> like oh i read her book or oh i studied her in undergraduate school mm -hmm. it was fantastic yeah anyway so all of that to say, we're really excited about going away next week, but we need some suggestions from you if you're from California or Southern California about what we should do when we're there. Yes. So today we're talking about pre-algebra. Mm, it's Gemma not my wants. favorite subject. I, when my kids come home from school, I have a eighth, an eighth grader and a sixth grader, and I gave up trying to help with math when they were in third grade, I think. Third so grade? Like, oh, it, Maybe fourth. Okay, maybe fourth. I love math, but... I do not. Jamie is a number person to a very... She's crazy quirky, number. Yeah, quirky. she's a little quirky with the numbers. But I am not. But uh, so this is math this you can wrap I your can brain do. around, right? <laughs> you are going to love this game. This is a really easy game. It's actually a free printable in My Teachers Pay Teacher Story. I left the link up there already in the video description for you. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. I've demonstrated it at a number of different workshops and with different groups of teachers. And I even have a YouTube video about how to do it. <laughs> and yet, every time I talk to people, they're like, I don't understand, can you show me how to do it? So this is actually a pre-algebra lesson that we use with our three and four-year-old students. And it's an introduction to the Cartesian plane, the Cartesian <laughs> coordinate system. I was like, Jamie, you've lost me. <laughs> which is just when you find a point on a graph, which is like X comma Y, and which is a really important skill, of course, in all upper math levels. And we introduce it here in preschool, of course, without telling them that we're using the Cartesian plane. So I want to show you. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Today, Ms. Jamie is going to teach you to find coordinated points on a Cartesian plane. <laughs> Not so much, no. but I am going to demonstrate how to do it, and I'm going to show you what it looks like when you print it off, and then I'm also going to show another one about like how to set it up. So the game is always on either the way, pocket way. chart, or sometimes we'll put it on the floor for them. And the idea is that there are four pictures, and I've copied them onto different colors of paper. So this is a Halloween set. It comes out of the printer like this. There's a witch, a jack-o'-lantern, a spider, and a bat. And I copied them on red cardstock, orange, yellow, and green. It's the beginning of the year, so we use four colors. I put all of the red ones on the top row, the orange in the second row, yellow, and then green. And then I make sure that the pictures in the columns are the same. So the first column are all of the witches, the second column is the bats, the third column is the spiders, and the fourth column is the jack-o'-lantern pictures. And so what we do is we talk about that you know as I'm setting it up I'll talk to the kids about how they're the same and what patterns they notice about how the witches are in line and all of the bats are in line and then I have them close their eyes we usually say like look down at your belly button or something because they peek they peek they do peek and then I remove one and the question is which one is missing and the kids automatically their eyes are scanning up and down, well usually they scan color first, right? Mm -hmm. So they're scanning left and right and they identify that it's a yellow one missing 
And then they're scanning up and down and they identify that it's a spider. And so then somebody shouts out, it's spider. What color spider? Yellow. The yellow spider is missing. And they are finding the intersection of these two lines on this coordinate plane. So it's the yellow spider, you're right. And they'll say, okay, let's try it again. And of course they can all shout out when we're doing it because I want them to all be thinking and all participating. So I'll say, close your eyes, everybody. Um, the ones on the edge are more difficult for them and the corners are more difficult. So I usually start with the middle and then I work around to the edge and then finally do the corners. So I remove one and then I say to the students, um, which one is missing? And of course they'll scan, oh, it's a red one. Red one. I pinned it, of course, when, there's been, when the students are here. And then vertically they'll look and say, oh, it's a bat. It must be the? Red bat. Yes, you are so smart. The red bat is missing. And we do this with every theme, every season, every unit. And as the year gets, um, as the year goes on, it gets a little bit more difficult. So we start here, there's only four colors, but next month I might add a fifth color, and in January I might add a sixth color, to the point where with my pre-K students, I can fill this whole board. And they are scanning, you see their eyes scanning left and right, scanning up and down, and they find that intersection and name the point, which is pre-algebra. I'm Who learning knew? something, Ms. Gemma. I know. <laughs> so I want to show you how we set it up, um, just so that you can make sure that you see. Oops, thank you. There, um, this the I link should, that sure I left. I should be in this. Like, I don't have to be in. Hi. <laughs> She's in it. We're not I kind sure. Of in it. Okay. <laughs> the link that I left you. I think there's um, there's a bunch of different versions. So there's one for Thanksgiving if you're teaching Thanksgiving in November, and then the one that I'm going to show you how to set it up is just a generic fall. And so when I'm introducing it to the students, like Miss Gemma will pretend like she's three years old, I'll say, boys and girls, Miss Jamie has some pink pictures. I have a pink tree and a pink acorn and a pink pumpkin and a pink apple. And I have those same pictures in orange. Look, I have an orange tree and an orange acorn and an orange pumpkin and an orange apple and look friends i have the same pictures in green i have a green tree and a green acorn and a green pumpkin and a green apple and then i also have them in blue which pu which picture should i put up here first oh me me what do you tree do? the tree what should i put next acorn which one should i put third pumpkin and which one should i put last Apple. What do you notice about all the pictures in this row? They are all pink. Good, what about this row? They are all orange. You're, I'm a good a student. Good math student. I know, I might graduate from preschool one day. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. What do you notice about <laughs> the pictures in this column? They are all trees. These are all trees, what about these? Acorns. Yes, and so we kind of go over it as I'm setting up the game for the students. And I say, close your eyes. What's missing? And they scan, they identify that it's a green one. Scan vertically, it must be an apple. It is the green, green apple. apple. So smart, ready for regular algebra next year. <laughs> I don't know about anyway, that. This is a really easy game. Like I said, it's just a uh, black and white copy that I put on four different colors of paper, or five different colors of paper, and we cut them in fourths and set it up on the pocket chart. You could set it up on the carpet, and it's perfect to pull out if you have a few minutes of transition mm -hmm. time, or if you finish the day and the parents aren't gonna be there for eight minutes or something, you know, you've miscalculated the timing of your day. Yeah. I just pull this, I always have a set of it here behind my easel. We just pull it out and it's a fun way for them to Something I wanna say about this skills. is after we've done this a couple of times, we see the kids doing it too and they have someone who's being in the teacher and they, they take turns removing the card and guessing and they do really well they with do. that. They, they really do, we imitating that, us. That, you know, we love when they imitate yeah, us. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we find that with a lot of our uh, circle time activities that we do uh, repetitively for different themes is that then the kids want to do it during center time and maybe the teacher and play it during centers, which is obviously a fabulous activity for mm -hmm. centers. So. And also as they, they work on this too, we do it as a group first and then they can start taking turns to do it, which is a really good way for them to learn to share and take turns and that's really important negotiating whose time it is next yeah, for guessing which one's missing so we hope that's a fun easy idea that you can use right away like i said it's free print it off and try it out with your kids we hope you have fun playing and learning with your kids Leave.